Welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. We're continuing on in our ongoing study of how the church has allowed the world to influence it and get us off track in order that we might get back on track. That's the purpose of this, is to find where the church needs reform today. So that's what we're going to get back into. We're looking at, uh, we're using Babylon, which is absolutely scripturally sound to do, as the root of this. Because, it's, you know, we started this looking at Daniel chapter 2 and the statue of the image that was in Nebuchadnezzar's, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream that was interpreted by Daniel that showed these kingdoms, progressive kingdoms. And we identified them as Babylon, Persia, Greece and Rome, and, and, I, and I made a point of pointing out that there's only one statue. It's not like there were four different statues representing the four kingdoms. There's only one statue. It's a progression that goes through till the end of time, until Jesus returns. So we're looking at that and how Babylon, the religion of Babylon, the theology of Babylon, has influenced the church of today. So that's what we're going to go back into again. But first, Brother Mark is going to ask God's blessing on our time together in this program. You, oh Lord, we come to you this evening and we just ask you to open our eyes and open our hearts and open our ears to your word, Lord. And that way that we may apply to our lives. And we thank you for you having the word in 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 our lives and, gu and guarding it and just making it so it's the rock of our life. Amen. And thank you for being the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, when we ended the program last week, we were talking about uh, relics and rituals, the quest for power. Mankind has always looked for power. When you understand that power is about the ability to do something or the ability to control something. And we were talking about pilgrimages uh, as we ended. How Christians, well, and pretty much everybody, travels, people, yeah. people in general, travels, travel thousands of miles to get to where they think power is happening, right? right? And we were talking about that's not what God has in mind for us, for his true Christians, all right? That reminds me of the scripture where it, I think it was in Matthew where it says where many will say, you know, Jesus is here, the Messiah yes, is here. Yes, in Matthew 24, and we, we talked about that a little bit because we were talking about how this relates to magic. Uh, we're, we're talking about a quest for power. The world has no power. Mm -hmm. Satan has no power. It says that he's been disarmed. That's right. So he who said, I will make myself like the most high God, <clears throat> who is the great imitator, the great counterfeiter, has to come up with a counterfeit for power. And we were talking about that counterfeit being magic, right? We talked about that quite a bit. And we'll talk about it again a little this program, but in the last program, which is still available on the website. Um, so the, the, the point is we shouldn't have to go out and search for power. You know, Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, mm -hmm. told his disciples that they were to stay in wait for power to come upon them. That's right. The power would come to them. They didn't have to go out looking for the, for the power. It says in, in Luke 24, 49, Jesus said, And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. That's right. There's a lot in that one little verse. First of all, power comes from on high. Mm -hmm. And again, we talked about that quite a bit. Power comes from God. Yes. He is power. All right? In our lives, we, we talked about that being the Holy Spirit, but we, we talked about here's the kind of the process of getting power operating in our lives. It comes, first of all, from hearing God, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 17. And it comes from believing 
in your heart what you have heard from God. Mm -hmm. Romans 10.10. 10. And then it comes from confessing with your mouth what you've heard from God. Again, Romans 10.10. 10. And finally, acting upon that word that you've heard from the Lord. James 1.22. We're not just to be hearers of the word, we're to be doers of the word, right? I just find that interesting because we're talking about power and you're using Romans 10, 9, 10, which T is TNT. TNT, Italian dynamite. That's power. On the letter of the Romans, absolutely. We're looking for power to do things, power that comes from the Holy Spirit who dwells within the believer. Now, the Holy Spirit dwells within us. You don't have to go any place to find that power. It's, it's, it's here within you. Jesus said, you know, the kingdom of God is within you. Power, as I said, is about the ability to do and the, the and con, and the, and to have control. Controlling, the most important thing is the self. Yes, the flesh. All right, because there's constant conflict between our spirit and our flesh. This is why you know Jesus said in Luke nine. I'm going to read verses twenty three to twenty five. Jesus said, and he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what is a man profited if he gains a whole world and loses or forfeits himself? It's about self-control, self self-denial. Call it what you will. But real power, remember this, resides in his word. Amen. That's right. All right. That's the only weapon that Jesus used against Satan. You know, when he was out in the wilderness. That's right. And he is tempted by Satan. This is, this was his, I mean, this is the high, it's the epitome of a satanic attack Ultimate. against somebody, right? Ultimate, yeah. But each time that Satan tempts him, Jesus responds by saying, it is written. He responds with the word because the power is in the word. Mm -hmm. Now, think about that. It's not just there's some power in the word. All power is in the word. Right? Think of how the Gospel of John starts. In the first chapter of John, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Listen to this. All things came into being by Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. God spoke everything into existence with the Word. He said, Let there be light. And there was light. It's so, more of a kaboom. <laughs> but, but, yeah, yeah. This is the power is in that word. That's right. Not my word, his word. All right? So think Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. You probably have, I hope that you're familiar with this verse. The Lord says, So will my word, which, be, which goes forth from my mouth, it will not, re it'll be, right? Mm -hmm. It will not return to me void without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I send it. Isaiah 55, 11. Mm -hmm. The power is in the word, and God has entrusted us with his word. Now, when I'm talking about, you know, the power being in the word, I'm not talking about just the things that we can say. We're not to lean on our own understanding. I'm not talking about positive thinking, no. or even what mostly is called positive confession. It's about his word, not ours. That's right. That was true even of Jesus, wasn't That's it? Right. Jesus said, for I did not speak at my own initiative, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say, what to speak. I know that his commandment is eternal life. Therefore, the things I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the source of the power. And it's written that the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. That's in Luke chapter 12. Mm -hmm. So it's important to remember this because, you see, another, another common factor in the practice of magic and in seeking for power, and that magic is God, the counterfeit of God's power, right? right? The secret, along with deception, distraction, and, well, let me say this, is incantations. Mm -hmm. Okay? Got incantations? It says in Proverbs 12 that an evil man is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous will escape from trouble. Mm -hmm. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his words. Right? Proverbs 12, 13, and 14. So it's very, very important 
that we watch what we speak. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, first of all, be careful what you listen to. Right. But it says in Peter, Peter said, if any man speaks, let him speak as the word the utterances of God. We have to be very prayerful about what we allow come out of our mouth. Because we're held accountable. Because we are accountable for every careless word, Jesus said, right? right? Mm -hmm. So our confession and our prayers can and all too often have become magic incantations. Mm -hmm. Kind of a, a spiritual abracadabra, mm -hmm. you know, waved over the hat, where it becomes a formula. If you say just the right words in just the right way, then God, like, has to, like a genie popping out of a magic lamp, has to pop out and start granting your wishes. I know he's absolutely right. And yet, too often, that's kind of what's subtly being taught in many parts of the church. Okay? The power is not in your words. The power is in his words. And his words, you have to hear from him. Be slow to speak. Be quick to listen, it says. Quick to listen, slow to speak. You've got to hear from God before you start speaking. And that's also dangerous, I think, when people are being led to the Lord. They have these pat prayers for them to say well, and to, to receive uh, Jesus. Yes. And this goes back to what I said in the beginning of this. Part of the problem is the relics and rituals. Yes. And it becomes, prayer becomes ritualistic. Right. right. And if you want to see how unritualistic prayer should be, go look in Matthew at what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. Read Matthew 5 through 7 and see what he said about what we speak, how we should pray. That's right. All right? And we're not to be like the Gentiles with vain repetition, saying the same thing. And I say it goes all the way back where God says, you know, this people draws near to me with their, with their words, but their heart is far from me. Mm -hmm. And what they're talking is, you know, the traditions of men learn by rote. Mm -hmm. So, I want to talk more about this magic, because this, this is truly important. Remember, the only thing that Satan has, I'm going to say this again, he's been disarmed. So, what he has is the appearance of power. Mm -hmm. It's magic. Now, magic can be very impressive. Yes. I mean, you know, I don't know how, how much you've been around, but if you see some uh, experienced mm -hmm. magician, mm -hmm. you, you sit there and, boy, you'll scratch your head. Because it's they very, very impressive. Yes. But it is all smoke and mirrors. It is deception. Yes. It, it is sleight distraction and sleight of hand. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that last, exactly. last week. You know, yes. Power is, resides in the hand of God. We reside in the hand of God. Amen. Whatever situation we're in, God's got it well in hand. Yes, he does. But with, with Satan, it's not that, that hand. It is sleight of hand. That's right. Trying to deceive you, all right? I talked about, to some degree, I talked about the, the, this constant going places looking for power yes. and seeking power in places other than the Lord, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? Uh, we have to be careful about seeking power in other people, in men, yes. all right? I would say you got to be prayerful about that. In the church that I grew up in, we had patron saints. Mm -hmm. These are dead people. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Word of God, all believers are saints, right? That's right? But I believe that there is indeed a patron saint, actually a god of magic. Okay. All right? His name is Mammon. That is the great distraction and the great deceiver. That's right. Mammon is wealth. Now, it doesn't say that money is the root of all evil. Well, you hear it quoted so often. It says that the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. And, and it calls greed idolatry. So what Jesus was warning about was that greed, trusting in mammon, trusting in wealth, the wealth of the world. There's nothing wrong with having money. Not, you know, that's not, that's not the problem. It is this greed, greedy desire for riches. Right. And thinking that the money is the answer to all problems. Well, that's why I, why I want to talk about it. Not just the, you know, to rephrase, Alice said, you know, it's, that's... The answer to the problems. In other words, that's the power. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever said, oh, if I only had a billion dollars, I could do this. I would do this. I, you know, you're, you're, you're literally confessing that what would give you control, what would give you the ability to do is the money. That's right. Okay. So now you're not looking to God to give you the power. Yeah. You're looking to the money. I've had, you know, I've prayed with friends. 
and who were in not the greatest financial situations, which, by the way, is hardly uncommon in this day and age, especially in many of the places that we travel to. Uh, I, you know, and this is something all too common, like in, in the, on the continent of Africa. And I talked to you know friends of ours in Africa where we've been to minister, and where we hope to go back to minister. Uh, and they don't. I mean, you want to talk about people that don't have money. That's right. And one of the things that I caution them about over and over and over is that they're typically always seeking money from the West. For what the situation to, that they're in. To need. give them the the ability to overcome their situation. Mm -hmm. Now, on, on the one hand, you know, I, I can't fault them. I can't, you know, they need, they oftentimes need money mm -hmm. because they're in desperate straits. Right. But God's not limited to using money. No, he's not. <laughs> That's a fact. Well, we've known that. You know, I have, I haven't seen any money printed where it says, you know, the kingdom of heaven. It says the United States of America. Or it says the Bank of England or the Bank of Scotland. You know, it, it talks about Kenyan dollars or Belizean dollars. Or, uh, this is why Jesus, when he was confronted one time, he said, well, let me see your coin. So whose picture is on the coin? Caesar. He said, well, and give to Caesar what, what belongs to Caesar. You know, God is not, not limited at all to using money. But we seem to think that he is. So I pray for people, but it's like they want me to pray for them that God would supply the money. Because they believe money has the power to deal with their situation. Rather than, let's skip the middleman and say, okay, God, deal with the situation. However you want it. Exactly. And if, it, if, it, if you choose to use money, you know, Peter one time was talking about the taxes yeah. it would do. So God, you know, Jesus said, go down to the, go down to the sea, Sea Galilee, and catch a fish, and bada bing, bada boom, it's open the mouth of the fish, and there's the money. <laughs> so God gave him the money to take care of the need. But very, not always. Yeah, in a very strange way. <laughs> Without earning it. Yeah. Be because it's not based. God is a God of grace and gifts. It's not based on us earning it. You know, what is the work that we are to do? To believe on him whom the Father sent. We're to believe in Jesus. That's the work we're to do. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I, we could go a million miles astray here and talk about the fact, I, but I said it in the beginning, we are to be doers of the word. Mm -hmm. Okay? I've been saying for four decades that I believe with all my heart that the church that I know I'm talking about, and bear in mind that Alice and I have had the opportunity. I've, I've spent time ministering churches on five continents. I have been in churches in 50 different countries of virtually, well, lots and lots of different denominations. And I make this statement, not as a condemnation, but as an observation. By and large, the church has exchanged the power of God for respectability. And I, I believe that, right? Yes. You know, there's having come from that Catholic background, I know of uh, Dominic, who started an order of, of monks back, I think, in the 1100s. The Dominicans, right? You may have heard of the Dominicans. And he is credited with having met Pope Honorarius III in, in Rome at a time. Now, this is even before St. Peter's Cathedral as it is today, or Basilica. But... This Pope, this is what the account goes, and it's been spread for hundreds of years, that the Pope said to Dominic, you know, pointing to all of this, all of this glory and grandeur that was there in Rome, saying, no longer, you know, because they, they call themselves Peter, you know, says, no longer can I say, silver and gold have I none. And Dominic looked at him and said, neither can you say, rise and, and walk in the name of Jesus. Rise and be healed. Mm. I, I believe that we've created that power of God for respectability that comes with, with things that impress the world, right? We need to trust the Lord, not just trusting that he'll supply us with money, with what the world has. Otherwise, we're still trusting in the power of mammon. Yes. Okay? It's serving. It's serving power. We are serving power. Power... God or the power of man. Because we have been so conditioned to believe 
in the power of wealth, of money. Yes. Yes. Then it'll give us the ability to do or the ability to control. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Well, if I had a million dollars, I could do this. I would yeah. do this. I could, you know. You're trusting in the money. Yes. Whether you're asking God to give it to you or not. Mm -hmm. All right? And, and this is part of the problem with prayer, our prayer life. It's about, you know, give us this, give us this, give us this, so we can have that power, so we can be in control, so we can do. I promise you, I promise you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that if God is calling you to do something, he will provide for you to do it. Maybe he'll give you the money. Maybe he'll do it some other way. I mean, we have certainly experienced it both ways. Yes. But it, it depends on where are you, honestly, where are you placing your trust? Where are you placing your confidence? For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. First John 5, verses 3 and 4. What overcomes is faith. Yes. Where does faith come from? From his word. Faith that connects us to the power of God is first and foremost about giving, not about getting. Right? Okay. Again, this is one of the problems in the modern church, particularly in the West, mm -hmm. that we think that faith is about, oh, I want to get this, I'm going to, I got faith to get this, I got faith yes. to get that. When, when was the last time you said, I, got, I have faith to give? I mean, it's always about faith to serve, faith to give. Now, by the way, I mean, I, I, I don't want to be misunderstood. I want to operate in faith so that I can get great gain. It says in Hebrews 11, that great faith chapter, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the men of old gained approval. It doesn't say they gained silver and gold. It doesn't say they gained, say they gained new cars. or. It says that they gained God's approval by their faith. That's what we need to be seeking. You know, it says in Hebrews 11, by faith, Abel offered. By faith, Noah prepared an ark. By faith, Abraham obeyed. By faith, Abraham offered up Isaac. By faith, Isaac blessed. By faith, Moses chose to endure ill treatment with the people of God rather than enjoy the passing pleasures of sin there in Egypt. That's what faith is supposed to do in our lives. We should be praying for that faith to arise in our lives. Because that's what God, Jesus is going to be looking for when he comes back. He says, when the Son of Man returns, will you find faith? That faith. Yes. That faith. Yes. The faith that gives you the power. It was the faith that gave the... That, that gave the woman the power to... Get power from Jesus to heal her. The woman who had been yeah. hemorrhaging for twelve years. Yeah. Yes. Faith arose in her heart, yes. and she went out and said, "If I could just touch the hem of his garment." I mean, it, but see, again, it's faith about connecting with God. Yes. Her faith was about connecting with Jesus Christ. The power. Okay. We need to have that that great grand desire to more and more connect with the, with the Lord. He'll take care of the rest. Does it not say in the Sermon on the Mount, did Jesus not say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? All the rest shall be added unto you. When he talked about no man can serve God and mammon, was he not talking about the fact, you know, listen, God will take care of you. Absolutely. You know, it's not about what the, what the world seeks. He said, look at the grass. Look at the flowers of the field. God clothes them better than Solomon with all of his wealth and riches. You, do you trust in God? Do you trust in God? The, the thing is, what we're trying to determine here is, this is, what we'll, this is what will get the approval, gain the approval of God, is if we are trusting in Him. Amen. Like little children. Yes. If we are trusting in the love of our Father to take care of our needs and deal with our situations. He is in control. Absolutely. And if power has to do with control, let me tell you, God is exercising His power in our lives. 
The devil can't block it. No. You know, the only thing that can block it is you. That's right. You, this is one of the most it. astounding truths in, mm -hmm. in all of creation, at least for the moment, that you have the power to say no to an all-powerful God. Not forever, yeah. but at the moment, you can say no to God. Mm -hmm. You can say no with your life, with your actions, what's going on in your life. You need to be around people, have good fellowship, people who will encourage you to walk in faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And this is the danger, and this is what we've been talking about, that Babylonian, that worldly priesthood that is not encouraging people in the Word of God, all right? This, this was a start about because the priesthood, was the Magi, which were the magicians, all right? Think about this. The Babylonian, the world's priesthood, is reserved to a special few. The royal priesthood is made up of all true believers. The Babylonian priesthood, the religious priesthood, always wants control. The royal priesthood always wants to serve. The Babylonian counterfeit that priesthood always stands between people and their God. That's right. The royal priesthood always stands alongside one another before our God. Hallelujah. The Babylonian priesthood relies on the appearance of power, magic driven by deception. Mm. True power, the royal priesthood, relies on the word of God. True power driven by the Spirit of the living God. Wow. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Our Lord is in control, accomplishing His purpose. That's what it says in Isaiah 55. I quoted from Isaiah 55, right? What is His purpose? He said in Isaiah 43, He is forming a people to declare His praise. He's forming a people who will proclaim his love and declare his praise. Powered by love. Powered by love. That's, that's kind of our little thing on Bible talk. We say we are proclaiming God's word powered by God's love. You want to know power? You know, you've heard the expression love makes the world go around. Mm. That has to be true in our lives. Yes. But you know that's a big lie, a fat lie out in the world because out in the world money makes the world go around. That's right. You can tune on, tune in any news station. They're going to be giving you financial reports from, from Hong Kong, from London in the city, from, from Wall Street in New York. They're not going to be giving you love reports. They're going to be giving you financial reports because they know that for the world, it is money, mammon, that makes the world go around because they believe in its, ma they believe in its magic. They believe that money has the power. Jesus says money has power. The world says money talks. Jesus said money talks. But Jesus said it lies. Said beware the, the, the deceitfulness of riches. Because the deceitfulness of riches chokes the word of God. That's the power. What is the power? What is God doing in our lives? What is his purpose? We are a royal priesthood. It says in 1 Peter 2, 9, you are a chosen race. A royal priesthood, a holy nation. A people for God's own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness and into your marvelous light. It is in his power. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are at work in our lives. Your Holy Spirit indwells us, Lord God, that we might be that people of praise that you have formed us to be. Father, I just pray that you use us in the coming days for the glory of your name. Amen and amen. Till next time. God bless you and goodbye. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame But I love that old cross Where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners